What's going on, YouTube? Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into our channel. I'm Ty. I'm Katie. We're taking up to you right now watching Little Mix of Yeah, 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 Brush it off, brush it off. <laughs> I'm shedding hey. a little bit. Hey. <laughs> <All right. laughs> brush it off, brush it off. Let's it's go. Little Big Tat Six. Yeah. <laughs> Where we come out a little Brush away the haters. Every single day. At 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's right on time. You're right on time. Welcome. Today we're reacting to a interview from Hits Radio. This Jade. is more of Jade. Jade. We love Jade. Yes. Jade. Let's see it. Here we go. It says Jade Thurwall is dating her first Rush. Oh, okay. So kids were popping off. I did always fancy Jordan. Aww. Hi, it's Jade Thirlwall of Little Mix, and this is my teenage self. Let's do this. Let's That's a cute this. idea. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I'm just going to say there are many notes in here. Let's begin. What were the most embarrassing trends you took part in? There was a phase <laughs> where I did always try to straighten my hair, which was hard to do as a teenager with very thick, bushy hair. Obviously, I'm hair size now. And this style is not far off what uh, the girls used to do when you were younger. Like, all the chaps would have the two stringy bits <laughs> and the slicked back <laughs> hair, but I couldn't do it myself, so I did my best. And then I remember going to and the hairdressers with a picture of Victoria Beckham when she had the bob and was like, can you do my hair like this? And it was the worst thing I ever did because obviously I've got naturally very curly, thick hair. So they did it lovely and then the minute I left and washed my hair, I had a fringe like pinging everywhere. Oh no! It was no. Short. It was oh. really awful. And then also there was the phase of like, remember when people put like concealer on the lips? Right? <gasps> oh no! Oh! Oh, Ad. Ad. Come on, Don't know. ads. What is going on? All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, we deliberately wanted to look dead to everyone. I, I feel like I want to blame Diana Vickers for that. Because <laughs> it was very her at the time. So there was that. And then in the beginning of X Factor, remember when onesies were, like, huge? Which I stand by. I love a onesie and an ugg boot. But as a combo, not so great. And me and Perry, particularly, would always be packed in a onesie and ugg boot the point where we got called in to the label office and told off for always looking like we weren't pop story enough. Oh, oh. my gosh, really? I the picture oh. of me and Perry. And I don't know why we did this, but we were so proud of that look that we stood outside the Corinthia Hotel, which is a five-star hotel. <laughs> look at London. them, they're so young. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's Aww. awesome. What does it say? Norway? One piece of Norway. <laughs> that's awesome. In a boot, in a onesie, and we're like... So yeah, I'm glad that trend disappeared. Thanks for the bollocking cycle. Okay, which girl bands did you most look up to? I mean, obviously Spice Girls were a big one for me. I had a Spice Girls wallpaper. Oh, I wow. Had, like, remember when everyone used to have, like, the board around the room as well? And it had, like, pretend signatures on. And when my friends would come around, they're like, Spice Girls have signed my bedroom. And like, Spice Girls have been in your bedroom and signed it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I looked up to the Spice Girls. Love TLC, Destiny's Child. Oh, yeah. I play their album on loop. And of course, the OJs, the Supremes, I was obsessed with because my mom was. We were obsessed with the Dino Ross and the Supremes. And I think that's where my love of girl bands first formed, to be honest. I'm partial to a bit of Bewitched as well. Let's start on that. What TV shows or movies were you obsessed with as a teenager? I feel like the first thing that springs to mind is probably Glee. That was a big one. Oh, really? Going off. And Ugly Betty. I was so into musical theatre and stuff as well, so Glee was like dreamy for me. And then with Ugly Betty, I think I really. I remember that show. Like, yeah. I, it always used to piss me off though that all these women would wear like glasses and braces and have like frizzy hair, which was me, and be told that like that wasn't good enough and they had to like change in order to be beautiful. Like with Princess Diaries and all those movies where they'd have like a makeover. And I'd be sitting there with my big bushy hair and my glasses would be like, something's not right here, huns. 
cut some main blow drying my hair since I had a little mess. <laughs> no, but I'm embracing myself again now, and it's never too late to do that. And now I look back at those movies and I'm like, God, we need to do like a make under movie where we encourage people to like not have to do that in order to feel good. Thanks, what was your worst subject at school? Probably maths. I'm very good with creative stuff. I love English and English literature. That's like my favourite, my favourite uh, lesson at school. I remember doing a big competition where they, they brought some maths people into school and they thought I was like a prodigy because oh. they brought in Sudoku and that I can do really well. And part of this test was Sudoku and I nailed it so quickly. They thought I was like a child genius and moved me up to all the top classes. And then wow. Like, yeah, that was just everything else. <laughs> it was just Sudoku. Which I still do to this day. Where was your first kiss? My first kiss was in the Lake District. I went on a school trip and I went up the hill with a group of friends and I stood behind a tree and I kissed my first person. And I remember it being really sloppy and horrible, like teeth clashing, tongues <laughs> wagging. We both obviously didn't have a clue what we were doing. And then I just thought, that's it now, I'm married. That's it now. <laughs> Get your hats, everyone. And then we got back from the trip and I got dumped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who was your celebrity crush and have you met them? The girls, this is definitely Zoe Kravitz. I think if I met her, I'd be a bit speechless. Growing up, I used to fancy the Backstreet Boys, but I've never met them there. Uh, not really. Yeah, not really, actually, any of them. Although I will say that my current boyfriend, when Rizzle Kicks were popping off, I did always fancy Jordan. And we actually never met. We always end up at the same events. We never actually and weirdly, we were looking through his emails the other day. We, not me, just like stalking him. <laughs> and we found an email of when he very nearly was the feature on How You Doing with Miss Elliot. It was nearly going to be Rizzle Kicks. And he loved it. And I think his management said no. Wow. Rizzle Kicks management. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I didn't know he was in a group. I didn't know that either. Rizzle Kicks? Is that what she said? Hmm. Never knew that. No. What was your signature scent? Britney Spears, curious. Nice. I had that too. You did. Yeah. Yep. It was in a blue bottle, and then she brought out Britney Spears' Fantasy, which was so sweet. Like you, you, I can smell it now. I would be able to tell you now if it was. And I still, to this day, own a Bin Nye Fantasy, which was the dark blue bottle. Cause that's stunning. I'm sorry. She paved the way for celeb perfumes, and no one's done it better since. So yeah, that was my signature scent. And of course, I was partial to an impulse body spray. Who wasn't? I can remember at Christmas, they used to give you like the tiny miniature. You get a little set, and you get all the little ones like Davidoff and Calvin Klein, all them ones. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, who did you have posters of on your wall? I had Aqua. I used to love Aqua. S Club 7, and to collect their magazines as well, subscription. That looks so um, 90s. Yeah. And sing, uh, Destiny's Child, Samantha Mamba, Icon. Yeah, she was. I forgot about that Yeah, song. me too. Which is very different to my brother's. Yeah. Song, it was very like a zoo in FHM. <laughs> it was like. My brother was five years older than me, so he had like, you know, George and, and all the big movie women on his wall. What was your nickname growing up? My nickname growing up was Pickle. Pickle? everyone used to say I was so little and cute, you could put me in a pickle jar. And that just stuck. <laughs> it's worst ones, isn't it? The girls did actually in the beginning, because they obviously would ask like, oh, what's your nickname? And I said Pickle. So they used to call me Pickle in the very beginning and that got replaced with Poopy. <laughs> 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 Whenever I'm nervous, I have a panic poo. So I'm known for that before going on stage, and that's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your most awkward teenage dating moment? Where do I start, honestly? There's so many. I mean, bless my best friend Holly, who I've known since school, who I literally live with now, still. I used to constantly force out of being your third wheel, no matter what date I was on. Holly, bless her, would always have to be. <laughs> bless it. her. And now I look back and think, I'm so sorry I did that to you. The amount of movie trips and dates where she would just be standing there awkwardly Aww. and I put her through that and she's still here now so 
what can I say, that's best friends for years, isn't it? Those are very awkward. I remember going to see Step Up 2 on a date. What else was around that time? Shrek 2 was probably one, yeah. Look at all the classics. And then you'd always be waiting for that moment when you'd like hold hands and be like, Ooh! and then you'd find your neck on and in the back row and you'd think you were dead like growing up and clever. And then let your mama be waiting outside to pick you up. And I'd be like, nah, wait around the corner. This didn't show us up. Sorry, I keep throwing these on the floor in the hopes that you'll pick them up. <laughs> oh, so that's one. What advice would you give to your teenage self? Um, I would say to stop trying your best to like fit in or be popular. In the first few years of school, I had a really tough time. I got bullied quite a bit. So I was very nerdy and I actually love that about myself now. I love how much of a geek I am and how much I love reading and but it was felt so uncool to me then that I'd literally like hide who I was and try my best to like fit in with the popular kids. And I remember every time I'd try and do that, kinda like me and girls and stuff when you'd finally get invited to a party and you'd feel so validated and you'd turn up and you wouldn't have a good time, you'd just be trying your best to look like you're having a good time improving to the world why you were like pretty enough or whatever it was. I remember having an obsession with trying to get in the boys top tens because that was a thing at school and you'd go on MSN and they'd list the top tens and I was never in it and I used to get so upset and I think oh god it's so boring why did you care so much and yeah I used to get so upset about my spots because I had acne and all these things, I just worry so much. And I think in turn, the more you worry, the more your body does react to that stress. So yeah, I would just tell myself to not worry so much and be more confident in who I am. And now I look back at all those teenagers that would get grief, like, you know, whether it was the geeks or, like, the goths or all these kids that, like, were so brave enough to actually celebrate being different. And I look back now and think, oh, you really, like, well done you for doing that and going against the grain. Nicely said. Yeah. Little Jade, teenage Jade. Oh, I just think she's unbelievably proud, to be honest. Because this is, honestly, I am literally, without sounding cheesy, I'm living the, my dream of what I wanted for so long. And I was such a shy girl, and I was so nervous all the time. I still do get really nervous, and I've had a lot of, like, therapy and things to deal with that, stage nerves, anxiety, and all those things. But, yeah, just, just I just remember as a teenager being constantly scared of everything and almost scared of what I could, knew I could achieve which is a thing as well I think so I'm glad that my teenage self at like 18 years old had the confidence to turn up to that audition and be like no this is what I want to do and stuck to it and that's awesome yeah self. I'm here now so yeah heck yeah Woo! Aww. yeah teenage self there's the jingle <laughs> <laughs> That loved was, that. That was that a great was one. That such a good one. That flew. Yeah. Wow. That was really good. I really liked that. That was cool. Brings you back. Yeah, right. To the teen I know years. some of those songs and yep. like she was talking about what the Spice Girls and yep. Beyonce or Destiny's Child. Yep. Everything. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I remember I used to have like those Bop magazines or like J14. <laughs> they had like that perfume, all that stuff. <laughs> Sweet. Well, let us know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this interview and this video. If you did, hit that like button and what should we watch next? Yeah, let us know. And thank you so much for watching this video. And if it's your first time coming across our channel, check it out one of our videos. Please give us a quick subscribe. Hit that notification bell to stay up to date because we come out with videos every, every single day. day. And we can't wait to see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. See ya. And a huge thank you to everyone who supports us over on Patreon. Yes, thank you so much for supporting us on Patreon. Like all these awesome people over here. If you want to check it out click the description down below sign up today and check out some little mix content yeah we got little mix exclusive content over there little mix the search lm5 tour film and a ton more so we hope to see you over there we'll see you there bye see ya